Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. We are finally back out on the YouTube Yacht Project. If you're new to the channel, we're building a rental cabin in the shape of a steamboat. Paddle wheeler back there. You see the kind of bow shape. You'll get it. We'll talk about it during the video. Today we're doing a Q&A session with a bunch of questions that you guys have had on previous videos about the YouTube Yacht and the ICF process on the whole of the vessel, if you will. And the first question we're going to address is actually going to be what we're working on during the video, which is how are you going to form up the curve for the paddle wheel supports right there? So let's jump right into that, get started on that, get your questions answered. Got all the tools down here in my fancy white duck tool bag. Technically, it's a log carrier, but it's a canvas bag. Use it how you please. Anyway, link in the description if you want to check it out. And then all your questions are right here on the fancy iPad with the Ryobi charger. Let's talk about this. Along with answering your questions today about the ICF and the YouTube yacht as a whole, we're going to try to get the paddle wheel supports shaped, cut, formed up, and braced up as well. It's like the C-130s just know when we're working out here. There he is. Should be two. Guys think I can email them and go for a ride sometime? That'd be pretty cool. So we're trying to accomplish just a little bit of a curve basically we're going to cut this part out of it but have a little curve to it overall this comes out eight feet but the bracket for the paddle wheel will be in just a little bit it should allow for a, about a 12 foot paddle wheel diameter i think that'll be about the right size we'll just have to see when we get it installed i don't common that's what it did look like and now it looks like this kind of got it hacked out there with the sawzall the sawzall got a little away from me right in this uh in this area here but that's okay when we get the rebar in there which will be the next step we'll get the plywood on there and it should make a nice gentle curve and look really great so There's confusion on board right now. There is confusion, no doubt about it. <laughs> Question number one, will the wheel be able to turn? No, absolutely not. Not for guests anyway. When I mount it, it will be on a bearing and a bearing so I can spin it, but that's primarily for maintenance reasons. It's gonna be a lot easier if I have to repaint parts of it. I can turn it, paint everything down here, turn it, paint everything, turn it, paint it. You guys get that. As far as will guests be able to flip a magic switch and the paddle wheel paddle no i just don't think the insurance company is going to like any feature that can delim a guest plus that just looks horrible on a review you know what i mean there's no way we're going to get five out of five stars if people are losing their hands in the paddle wheel so no it would be cool i'm not going to take that away from you it would be a cool feature but no the paddle wheel will definitely not be able to turn for guests next step on this section is going to be getting the rebar in here and bent and tied in place that's gonna be the next step so let's jump on that real quick grab my rebar ties grab my box. not only does white duck have the uh, firewood carriers they have pretty much anything canvas this is one of their tarps they sent us to try out and i've been pretty impressed with it so far it's just been sitting under here keeping stuff dry we haven't really 
done a lot with it, but I do like the quality of it. It's definitely heavy duty. We're just getting some rebar ties. If we look down the wall, you can see there's these snaps on each course, and there is a number four rebar on each course. One, you can see that one comes in and turns and goes down this wall. That one turns and goes down that wall as it should. I've already laid a longer one in right here. So we have to get our horizontal into here, and then we've got to get some that kind of match the curve of this concrete. Now we've got a rebar every course. Like that. That one down there. Do the curve section next. Hopefully these are about the right length. Yeah. Be good. Now. Mm-hmm. How's a feller gonna do this? Or Looks pretty good. It's tied all the way into that original wall. I can get a tie on it right there too. That's great. Got both of them in there. Tied off, I was able to get everything tied off how I wanted it. Looks really good. Looks really good. Fits in here to the main wall really nice. Yep, I'm definitely happy with that. I am definitely happy with the way the two pieces of bar fit in there. Of course, this will get Actually, I think this is a question. Let's just address it. So the question is, what do you think about rebar going down the walls where the, uh, well, one, they're asking about the roll on the bow up front, which we can go look at that here in just a minute. Same all the way around. Vertical rebar every two feet. One thing I absolutely love about ICF are the rebar chairs, and every brand ICF has rebar chairs. They're all a little bit different, but they all do the same thing. So you see course number one, rebar on that side course number two rebar on the opposite side course number three back to the same one it's course number one and that is so when you drop your vertical rebar in from the top once the wall is stacked out it allows you to weave your vertical rebar in there see how it hits that side hits this side hits that side that holds that vertical rebar right where you want it to be which is pretty sweet it's a pretty simple system and it works really well. We've never really had any issues with it at all. The only complex thing on that bow is because it has the slight roll to it, it's gonna take some effort to get that bar weaved down between the other courses. But I think with a little bit of jimmying around, we won't have any issues. And back to the main point of where we started this conversation. Yes, this will get vertical rebar dropped in from the top. The next step is getting this plywood form on the bottom side, gives the vertical rebar something to sit on and then the system here will hold everything in place for us. So the actual width on these is 11 and a quarter. That's what we're going to go with.
So you can see we've got the plywood on there and I like the curve. I like the shape the plywood has. It's kind of hard to tell exactly that shape given there's these ginormous holes that I messed up whenever I was cutting that. Big enough you could probably throw a beaver in there. Look at that. That's insane. The good news is we can spray foam that and with the finish we're going to put on the outside it doesn't matter at all. But I will say I'm very embarrassed to show this workmanship on YouTube so on this side we're going to try a lot harder to make it look nice and tight and like it's supposed to. The good news is I can measure down to where the plywood's at and have a better, better measurement of where I need to be on that other side. Here's what it look like here. Gee whiz, bud. That is... You sure you want to put this on YouTube? Yeah, what's the worst they could say, right? What's the worst they could say? Let's do that side. We'll just do it this way. There you go. Look at that. Made it cloudy and rainy too. That's a pretty neat trick. This side turned out way better. Way better. Still had a little chunk missing, but that's uh, where the corner was. I guess if I wanted, I could cut a piece and snap it in there to finish that out. But the spray foam will fill that in. It definitely looks better than whatever, <laughs> whatever happened over here. Whatever happened over here, it looks better than that. Again, the important thing is the plywood has the same shape overall that the bad cuts are kind of thrown off the clean lines but when it's all said and done and we put the exterior finish on and it's all full of concrete it'll all look great it'll all look great so the next step you can see we have a little weeble wobble in her there that was tough to say weeble wobble that's what i'm going for anyway that's what we've got obviously we have some supports to do well i'll just show you Next thing we gotta figure out, getting these tied together and getting that bow we're looking for, is if they're plumb before we secure them. Obviously. I think my bevel's off on my circular saw. Better check that real quick. Weather's changing. Hear the birds singing? I think the sun's gonna try to come out on us. Oh, you guys okay over there? Sorry. All right, so here's what we're looking for. We're looking for plum. I'll set it up. There's a two by four down here. Set it on that two by four. Hold it up with my knee. Perfect. And then 15 to this outside edge. So let's just put that there. Let's see where plum is. Right there. What's that on the tape? 15 foot. By gosh. I tell you what. Not bad. That leaves us with a big gap here, but it's spray foamable. So no problem there. I'm okay with all of that. Oh yeah. So now that we have our overall width and these walls are plumb where we want them on these corners, it's time to see if we can get the curve we want. We're not looking for a lot here, not a lot, just enough that it, you know, down the back. So it's 157 inside to inside. If we take a foot off of that, which would be 145, 
right? How's that math? Yeah, that's right. 145. Let's see what that looks like. It is a rare day that a ratchet strap isn't the perfect answer, you know? Really, they help a lot. Forty-four and a half. That's ambitious. I mean, it's definitely got a little curve to it. Let's see from the top side, maybe. This is the first time I've come up to look at this from the top side. Man, that looks awesome. That looks so good. It's hard to tell because I haven't straightened the top of that wall yet. Maybe I need to straighten the top of that wall. But it's definitely got a little towards the back. I like that. I think it looks good. I can't quite get high enough to see what it looks like from the top, and I don't have the tops of the walls straightened yet. It's kind of hard to tell, but I'm just going to have to go with my gut and say that's the perfect amount. So that two by four should hold that measurement this way. I'm gonna leave the ratchet strap on until we get everything on there, but that should lock that measurement in. The only way I know to see if it's actually center is just to cross from this corner back to that and from there to there. So I changed my plan just a little bit, just because I'm just one guy here by myself. But I ended up marking on the board measurements in half inch, half inch increments. That was difficult to say. They are locked in on that end. You can see 74, 73, 72. So about 72 and a half is where it's touching there. Same thing on this end. So what we can do, make everything match up for us, just slide it, make sure that's actually touching the block where it needs to be. So we've got 73 right on, and on this side, touching the corner, 73 right on. That looks pretty good. So we should be pretty close to square. I'm pretty happy with that. Weevil wobble out of it. Still got up and down because we still have to do some vertical supports, obviously. But as far as left and right, we're pretty solid. Speaking of all the spray foam we've been talking about, let's address this question. This is a great question regarding spray foam. Let's take a look at what a little spray foam gun is and what kind of foam we use or what kind of foam is available anyway. As far as what size cracks you can foam, this is going to be pretty common. That's fine. Even this big old gap right here is going to be fine. This one we'll have to do something about. But in my experience, anything an inch or less, you can spray foam. As long as you get it thick enough, you can spray foam that and you won't have any problem. That foam really adheres to the ICF very, very well. Stuff like this, we can foam it with no reinforcement. If you do have big holes like this, you just foam her up just like you would there and then just put a board across that to hold that foam in place. The key thing you want to think about when you're spray foaming is one, you're replacing any insulation you accidentally or unintentionally took out, and two, you're trying to hold the concrete in. So you need the strength, but you also need good coverage so you don't end up, for example, if you get behind this board, you want to make sure you get spray foam in there. You don't want to spray foam to here and then come back on this side and spray foam to here and then leave a chance where concrete can come in direct contact with that wood because then when you pull the form off, 
now you've got a thermal bridge because that concrete is all the way past the insulation. As far as what type of spray foam to use, there are lots of spray foam options out there. Of course, there is the great stuff, which you typically see at most of your box stores, and that's what we're gonna use on this because I'm shopping at a box store for this. But also, most of your ICF dealers will sell these spray foam guns, and we'll take a closer look at that, and they'll sell uh, spray foam by the case as well, and it may be a different brand than this, but they can sell it by the case as well. So if you are going to do ICF, check with your dealer. Check with the person you're buying the ICF from. Chances are they have everything you need, including the gun and the foam. Now, they do make different types of spray foam. And uh, if you're not paying attention, you'll accidentally buy a case of the construction adhesive, which is okay. We will use on this job, but it's not what we need for the gaps on the ICF. This is actually uh, like subfloor adhesive in spray foam style. The difference in this is when you spray it, it foams a nice foam bead and then instantly just disperses into a glue. Uh, you don't want a high expanding spray foam underneath your uh, subfloor, obviously. That would not produce good results. So we cannot use this for what we need today. That's okay. Like I said, we will use it in the long run. I would pop the top here and show you how it works, but once you put this on the gun, you got to use the whole can. You can't... <laughs> You can't put it on, use it a little bit, and then take it off. Once it goes on the gun and then comes off the gun, the can's pretty much toast. You gotta use the whole thing. As far as this side of the operation goes, they sell the cans of great stuff that have the plastic straws. We've all seen that. But my experience has been, if you're gonna, if you're doing any project around the house, whether it's ICF or just insulation around pipes, if you're gonna use more than six of those cans with the little plastic straws, it's worth the money to just go ahead and get these. You can typically get these anywhere from 20 to $40 uh, online or in the box stores as well. They're really pretty simple. They have an adjustment on this end. All this adjustment does is affect how far back you can pull the trigger. So if you wanna lock it in this position so you're storing it in your truck and it doesn't actually spray spray foam everywhere, that's a good thing. But you can also just screw it all the way to the left and then you can engage the trigger all the way. What that does, is there's just a needle right there on the end. So when you pull the trigger, it opens it up, and then the foam can obviously come out. That makes sense. One thing, like I said, once you put a can on, don't take it off unless you're done with it. And if you store these, you need to store them with the can on. Even if that can is empty, if you store this with the can off, whatever foam, whatever residual foam is left down here in this little valve, it's going to dry up and your gun's pretty much ruined at that point. They have spray foam cleaner, but you're never going to be able to clean out this entire thing with that spray foam cleaner. Once you take that off, you need to make sure you put another one on there. Uh, it's also handy if you got a little bit left to turn it upside down and shoot it a couple times this way just to purge some air through it and get any leftover foam out. Let's knock out a couple other questions real quick. One question that was asked is, how come you didn't put the sewer line under the footer when you poured the footers? Great question. The main reason is, and how we're gonna do it, we'll end up cutting a hole down in the ICF block and stubbing a sleeve through. I'm gonna use a six inch sleeve because I wanna run four inch pipe out. The septic tank is gonna be right over there. The main reason we didn't run it under the footer is elevation. And the sewer line will run all the way from over there down over to here and our septic tank will be right in this area and that's about the same grade as that so if we would have went down under the footer and then had enough fall to get all the way to the septic tank our septic tank would be pretty insanely deep and given the fact that we hit quite a bit of rock on this i don't want to fight any more rock than i have to hopefully that makes sense it's basically just came down to elevation and fall and where I needed that to come through the wall. The deeper you put it in the ground, the deeper I got to put the tank in the ground, and the more work that becomes in the long run. Another great question. Yeah, absolutely. There's going to be several windows. Not your traditional style windows. We'll just pop inside here real quick. There's going to be portholes. One, two, three, four round portholes up there. Just enough to let some daylight in. Even though technically it's supposed to be the engine room, it's supposed to be the hole, it's supposed to be the guts of the ship, you still don't want it to feel like a dungeon. So there will be a little bit of light coming in and this door will be full glass as well. We're debating on putting a window right here as well, just a transom window, bathroom in this corner. I think we'll probably add a transom window right here so there's a daylight in that bathroom. We've gotta make that decision pretty quick as we're hoping to pour soon. This has been a very popular question and has been asked dozens of dozens of times. And to be fair, I have not answered it yet. I think a lot of you understand probably some type of stucco finished. But to give you the exact answer, it's going to be a product called Cement All. Cement 
hyphen all. I don't know if there's a hyphen or not, but that's what it's called. Basically, it's a cement-based product. You can feather it down all the way to, you know, a 32nd of an inch and build it out all the way to four inches. The big benefit of that is this situation right here. We're gonna be able to get a rough shape with the ICF and then use that cementol product in a form that we can make or a trowel we can make that'll really form that curve out nice and smooth. And then we'll be able to paint it and hopefully look like steel. I do have a question though. If anybody has ever made their own concrete stamp, there are lots of YouTube videos on it. There's lots of information on the web about it and it looks fairly simple, but I'm curious if any of you have actually physically done it yourself. And if you have, email me. Because what I want to do, I want to go find some old steel that has some rivets in it. And I want to make a concrete stamp, concrete mold, maybe two foot long, 18 inches, two foot long, and just, you know, three or four inches wide that whenever we put the cement all product on here, I can take that stamp, set it on here, and, you know, try to make rivet patterns. Try to really sell that steel look. I think that would really be the detail that kicks the whole thing off, you know what I mean? I think it's doable. I don't quite know how to do it yet, but I definitely think it's doable. And if any of you have done it, reach out to me, because I could use a hand with it. This is what we ended up with, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think that's gonna work really well. The only other thing I'm gonna add is a little reinforcement on this section and a little reinforcement on this section for the plywood itself. But other than that, I think it looks really good. I really do. I don't foresee any major issues with that. I think it looks sharp. Of course, we still have to do this side yet, but I'm, I'm just out of time today. The rain kinda, the rain kind of set us back a little bit, but that's okay. It's not that big a deal. We'll keep going with it. I do know there is going to be the question, especially when you guys see we still have more to do. When are you guys going to pour this thing? And follow up to that, people always ask, when you guys plan on opening this up to rentals? Well, it's not as easy as just giving you a certain date. And I'll tell you why. Another look from the top side. Definitely adds to the look of it. I think it's gonna look really cool. Yep, that's gonna look awesome. If you've been with the channel for a while, then you know this part, but if you're new, you might not know. We're doing this whole project off of purely YouTube revenue. We're not pulling anything out of our pockets on this one. We just don't want to. It's building a steamboat shaped rental cabin in the woods. And the whole reason we're doing this I don't know if we've talked about this before, but this is kind of Chelsea and I's retirement plan. And I know what you're thinking, you're nowhere close to retirement. And you're right. Our plan when we retire is to have several rental cabins. That's kind of the goal. And anything we can get done now, well, we're just ahead of the eight ball as far as that goes. And we're pretty excited about the opportunity that we can even do this Thanks to YouTube, thanks to you guys watching, thanks to you guys liking and commenting and sharing and, and everything you guys do to support the channel. It's a pretty amazing opportunity.
the best answer I have for when we're actually going to put concrete in the walls. I hope, I really truly hope by the end of April we can put concrete in these walls. Mainly so that that back wall washing in doesn't become a long-term issue that we have to deal with. I really want to get concrete in these walls. It would make me feel a lot better. But again, it all comes down to YouTube revenue and what kind of revenue we generate. This time of year, in the spring, typically channels just kind of, the views go down a little bit. People want to get out in the world. People, especially with things winding down and slowly getting back to normal, people want to get out and do things, which means nobody's sitting at home watching YouTube anymore. So that means revenue is going to drop just a little bit. Like I said, hopefully by the end of April, though, I would love to get concrete in these walls. And as far as when we're actually going to have this thing open and be able to rent it out, I hope it's not a very long process. I really don't want it to be a long drawn out process. I want to get it done. I want to get open. I want to get people in here and generate some revenue so we can move on to the next one. Like we said, we'd like to do several of these. Not necessarily boats, but several rental cabins as far as that goes. Now, an optimistic goal, and I'll just kind of give you a playful timeline. Like I said, an optimistic goal would be able to get the next two levels and all that dried in windows, house wrap, insulation, that whole thing. Uh, get that done by winter so we can do inside work during the winter. Wouldn't that be nice? But that's kind of optimistic. I think it's achievable, but you know, we'll just have to see how the channel goes. Speaking of people supporting the channel, let's look at this. Oh. <laughs> um, me not. Oops, sorry about that. So we've got a handle, okay? And with that handle, oh, there is a letter. Good, 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 good. I love when people include letters. Time out, I'll be right back with you guys here. All right, this is from Gary. Gary, um, let's say Linaway. Gary, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that, but uh, put yourself in the comments and I'll pin it so people can tell you thank you, because this is pretty awesome. Anyway, like he said, it is a captain's bill. He found it at a flea market, which is pretty awesome. And uh, let's see. this thing out. <laughs> My neighbors are going to love this. He said he doesn't know if it has a history. And I don't know how to find out. I'm looking to see if there's any kind of marking. I don't know if this is um, like a decoration that was made or if it was actually made for somebody's boat at some time. You know what I mean? You can see the way the letters are put in there. I don't know. I don't know how to find out. There's no markings on it. But uh, anyway. Well, y'all wanted a horn, and I said it would annoy the neighbors, but uh, we got this instead, huh? Yep. That is awesome. This is awesome, Gary. I cannot, cannot thank you enough. That is awesome. That is awesome. That is absolutely amazing. And when we get this thing done, and if you come and rent it and you come stay, That'll be in there. And you can ring it to your heart's content. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And I can't wait to hear it through the woods. I think it'll be really, really cool. I do appreciate all the support, guys. I really do mean that. Like I said, this is an opportunity that Chelsea and I never thought we would have. And it's really turned into something that's just been fantastic. It's given us, aside from not only the opportunity to build something like this, which we plan on doing as a business for our future, but meeting people like that, that support the channel and send amazing things in, it's just been a phenomenal experience. And I really can't thank you guys enough. Chelsea and I both, we really do mean that. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.